There's nothing more frustrating than arguing with a dumb person. They're blind to facts, immune to knowledge, and driven by ego. Never in history has a stupid person ever said, you're right, I was wrong, good talk. There is, however, a method to completely disarm these kinds of people, and in this video, we'll show you how. Welcome to Alux. In his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie argued the best way to win an argument is to avoid it. But often, there's no way to completely walk out. Carnegie's advice is meant for when the argument turns into an actual conflict. If you get into a fight with a pig, you'll both get dirty, but the pig will enjoy it. You may have read quotes like Mark Twain's. Never argue with stupid people. They'll drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. And while that sounds cool on paper, it's rarely the case in real life. That stupid person might be your friend who just doesn't get it, or that state worker who gives you a hard time and there's no way around it. For those cases, you need a proper way to handle the situation. You should only argue with a stupid person if the outcome is valuable to you. Now, before telling you how to win an argument with stupid people, let's first talk about what not to do. 1. Don't believe you will win. When someone wishes for something to be true, they will also believe it. Changing their mind means changing their belief system. That's something deeply ingrained in their minds, cultivated over years. No amount of arguing will ever change that. People are biased with their own knowledge, and the internet is built to enforce it. The drawback of content catered to the individual is that if you only read dumb shit, you'll only see dumb shit on your feed. When was the last time you clicked not interested on something? There aren't that many who actively curate their feed, so don't come into the argument with the purpose of changing the other person's mind. Try to understand where they're coming from, what makes them believe what they think. More often than not, they come from a place of ignorance and misinformation. The argument turns into debating their sources of information rather than the topic at hand, which turns into a completely different discussion altogether. Your goal isn't to prove them wrong. It's to understand why they believe they're right so you can better navigate the discussion. So, first of all, don't come in to dominate your opponent. 2. Your facts don't matter. We live in the era of fake news and over-information. People are usually overconfident about their own knowledge. Why would they spend energy understanding how some things work if they can just get by fine without knowing it? For example, do you know how a zipper works? You probably have used them all your life, but can you explain exactly, mechanically, how they work? Sure, you might have an idea based on observation alone, but can you actually draw the insides of a zipper? Likely not, but you do know what a zipper is, right? This is called the illusion of explanatory depth, and there's a great study about it. Yale professors Leonid Rosenbild and Frank Keel noted that People feel they understand complex phenomena with far greater precision, coherence, and depth than they really do. The professors asked students how different things work, from toilets to LCD screens and zippers. Surprisingly, most struggled to explain. This happens because our familiarity with everyday things leads to overconfidence. You've been using the internet for the better part of your life, but could you explain exactly how it works to someone in the 1800s? You got so used to things working that you never stopped to ask yourself, but why? So if you, a smart person, never asked yourselves these questions, why would a quote stupid person do it. Well, couple the illusion of explanatory depth with people's own biased belief systems, and you will end up with an incredibly stubborn and ignorant person. And these two points will be the foundation of winning the argument. Here's how you do it. 1. Consider the possibility you are actually wrong. First of all, you might be the stupid person in this conversation. 
if you're not open to this possibility, how could you expect another person to be open to it? If you come into the argument with complete confidence and nothing can change your mind, then it's pretty hypocritical for you to expect the stupid person to change theirs. Stupid people don't lack intelligence, they lack knowledge and understanding. If you're arguing with a mentally impaired person, you're the stupid one and they should be the ones watching this video. Granted, some people are completely idiotic and believe the craziest shit. Having an argument with a stupid person can be a great way to test your own understanding. Think of a stupid person like a 12-year-old. If you can't explain to a 12-year-old how something works, then you don't know it well enough. 2. You don't win the argument, you make the other person lose it. They might even perceive it as them winning. If you go into the argument with the conviction of coming out ahead, you will only butt heads with ignorance. If you win, you win against an idiot. If you lose, you lose against an idiot. It's a lose-lose situation. Instead, make the other person lose the argument by themselves. They will gladly do so. People love talking about things they think they know a lot about. It makes them feel knowledgeable and in control of the conversation. This is your entry point. Let them speak long enough and they will eventually contradict themselves. If you watch any good interviewer or negotiator, they rarely speak. Instead, they ask open questions and let the other person carry the conversation. And coming back to the illusion of explanatory depth, People think they know, but they usually don't. Let the other person carry the conversation and they will hit a wall at some point. They'll be completely stunned and not know where to go from there. 3. Ask how, not why. To build on the previous point, ask how something works, not why. Asking why will give you a shallow response. Not to get political or anything, but some people believe Donald Trump is still the president of the US. Ask them why, and they'll tell you because he never left. Asking why doesn't get you anywhere, but asking how will make people explain. The more you ask this question, the deeper you'll go into the rabbit hole and the harder it'll be for them to get out they will eventually back away from the conversation. Don't you be the one explaining why your truth is the right one. Let them explain their truth. 4. Don't be overconfident. Coming in too hot will trigger an emotional response that will turn the argument from idiotic to aggressive. It'll also make the other person point out even the slightest sign of inconsistency in your argument. There's a study that shows witnesses being more credible in court if they show a moderate amount of confidence instead of too high or too low. If you're overconfident, it'll start to look like your argument is driven by ego rather than understanding. If your confidence is too low, no one will take you seriously. So you have to be moderate. 5. Focus on just the central point. Don't get lost in too many tangents. Stay on point and make it clear. The most common word a stupid person will say in an argument is, but. But what about this? But what about that? If you entertain those questions, you'll end up at a point where not even you can remember what the original argument was about. Don't stray away from your central focus and also don't repeat it too much. Build your argument around it with your focus always being the center point. Whenever the conversation moves away from that, bring it back. And this is great advice for any kind of argument regardless of the other person. Think of the central point like the trunk of a tree. You can have some branches here or there, but all of them are connected to the tree. 6. Don't contradict them. That will leave you open to giving explanations of your own, which will have zero value. The moment you start explaining why they are wrong and you are right, you lose. It's your word against theirs, and they already believe themselves. Your facts won't change their point of view. 
Our individual knowledge is highly selective. You tend to remember what supports your belief and forget about everything else. Contradicting with a stupid person is like banging your head against a wall. You're not going to break the wall and you will end up with a headache. 7. Fill the gap. There are more chances for a stupid person to believe your narrative instead of theirs if you can fill in the gaps of their understanding. There's an experiment done by Professor Brandon Nehan of the University of Michigan and Professor Jason Reifler of the University of Exeter. They told students a story about a fictional politician who allegedly took bribes and then resigned afterwards. But when presented with the evidence that the politician didn't actually take any bribes, the students still weren't convinced. Why would he step down? Well, it was only when the professors told them the politician quit to take on another job that the students started to change their minds. The gap in their understanding was filled in. And with that, Aluxer, we hope these pointers will help you out in the sometimes inevitable arguments with stupid people that we all eventually end up in. They don't guarantee success because some people are just way too stubborn. But now you'll at least have a framework to construct your argument on. And we're curious to know, what was the most frustrating argument you've ever had with a stupid person? How did you handle it? Leave your story in the comments. And as a thank you for sticking with us until the end, of course you're getting a bonus. There's a good rule of thumb when to stop arguing with a stupid person and walk away. It's usually around three to four back and forths. Think of an argument like a tennis match. If you hit the ball three times and they hit the ball three times and the discussion is going nowhere, it's, it's time to move on. Either your argument isn't strong enough or they're just too stubborn to move past their own reality. No matter what, it's best to walk away at that point.